Hey guys, let me have a face-to-face a -face video about counterfeits. Uh, I am, I don't like to talk about them, but I feel like I do need to update you on it because it's been a long time. First and foremost, I have never seen a counterfeit with a hollow foil, and I get emailed pictures of counterfeits, like the little stamp or whatever the hollow foil is. I get emailed pictures of counterfeits or is this a counterfeit? Help me, is this a counterfeit? Help me, is this a counterfeit? Is this a counterfeit? Uh, just given um, the channel, and I get lots of pictures of counterfeits all the time on Facebook and questions and email. And sometimes, you know, then that I can see it being updated that way. Uh, secondly, uh, one of the biggest things is I was put on an email chain with a lot of famous magic uh, personalities. I guess I would call them magic personalities and the counterfeiters found our emails and they send us these emails telling us about new updates and kind of trying to get us to promote the product. I'm not going to mention who else is on this list, but these are people you would know. Uh, you would definitely know them and they are part of the MTG community. They are MTG personalities. Uh, sometimes they will write back an email saying, I right, well, take me off this list. I'm so offended because again, we didn't ask to be put on the list. They probably just went to found our emails from websites or whatever uh, and they give us updates on counterfeits because they want us I guess to buy or promote it I'm not sure uh, what they're doing but this is uh, the third update is Delson has had a Delson is by the way uh, my arts nemesis I guess if you would to say it he is the original counterfeiter and he's the one I talked about um, when I trapped him into trying to get me, what was it, 100,000 gorys for like a thousand dollars or something. Something ridiculous like that. And, oh, 10,000 gorys for like a thousand bucks. 10 cents a gorf, right? That's not too bad. And that was when gorf was over $200, right? Time of gorf. So uh, I've never seen a counterfeit without, a counterfeit with the foil, mainly because why would they do that extra step when they really don't need to? Like if you have a noble hierarch from Conflux, why would they not print that one without the hollow foil and print the Modern Masters one with it? It just creates an additional step, and that additional step can can uh, they can mess up on that step. Plus, it costs money to do it. It's just very messy. The same with Force of Will. Why would you print a Eternal Masters Force of Will when you can print the regular one easier and make the same amount of money? So that is the update on that front. As for my personal take on counterfeits, I don't trade anymore. I, I don't trade at all. I do not take my trade binder to FNM anymore. I do not trade, take my trade. I only take my trade binder when I'm selling something to a, a vendor. A vendor that I already know, that I've emailed and said, okay, these are the cards I have, are you interested? Okay, let's figure out a price. Uh, these vendors in Houston are very good to me and I have no reason to stop selling cards, if you will. I'm accumulating cards, but the cards I've all accumulate, I've accumulated since the counterfeit incident all have the little stamp on it, the little hollow foil at the bottom. And that's because, like I said, I do not want to deal with counterfeits at all, and that's the one way that I can avoid it. A lot of, some people will tell you that, oh, they can, they can mimic the foil. I'm sure they can. I'm sure that if anyone really wanted to, they could create uh, magic cards with the, fake magic cards with the foil, but why would they want to? Like, why would they want to? It's just additional headache, additional, and sometimes the card is less valuable, right? Than the one, because the other one, the non-foil, the non-hollow foil is actually odor, right? So a lot of times that card is more valuable. So why would you go out of your way to create a less valuable card and have more chance for mistakes and do a technique that is more complicated than just printing? That foil, it's a totally different process, right? The little. So I only trade for the um, foils and then the foil card itself, the hollow foil and the foil card itself, because I don't want, I don't want to deal with it. Like you know, I do not want to deal with it at all. I have got rid of all my original um, ally fetch lands, and then I, I got rid of all of them, and now I just have the uh, cons of Tarkir's ones with the little stamp, the foil stamp. Overall, my general feedback about the counterfeits is if you are a magic player, it won't really affect you. 
uh, if you just trade like I trade, but if you are interested in making money, you're interested in speculating, on Craigslist, there's a lot of good deals that are too good to be true. And they just cannot, it doesn't make sense that if you have Craigslist, you don't have the internet, you can't buy list it out for, if you're selling something that is worth 15, in this case, the $15,000 uh, case where the person was going to buy $15,000 of magic cards for, I think like $1,500 or $1,200, he reduced, they negotiated it down from fifteen hundred to twelve hundred. I mean, that just shows you that guy's what what a jerk that dude is. Um, he went to one Walmart. He explained to a Walmart person, Walmart employee here, no interest in this. And Walmart employees, this is a scam. We can't give you this cashier check. He went to another Walmart employee, another Walmart across the town. That other Walmart employee told told him this is probably a scam. You, but we're not going to do this. Walmart, right? Known for customer service. Told this guy, hey, you're being scammed, and the guy didn't listen, and eventually he got a cashier check at a, um, a Cash America or something, something that doesn't really give a shit about you, even less than Walmart. Uh, and they were like, sure, it's probably a scam, but here, here's a cashier check, just give me the uh, 3% or whatever. He was ready to send it, and then his wife was like, hey, this sounds kind of like a scam. He was like, is it a scam? I guess I'll ask Reddit. He was asking Reddit, to try to you know encourage him to probably buy it. Like if Reddit had said, yeah, this is not a scam, he would have bought it, hard, no questions asked, sent the money first, waited for the package. That's the only case scenario I could see you buying fake cards um, is that if, the, if someone is very greedy and they get pulled into this deal is too good to be true scenario, then greed will blind you. Um, into what the actual, into checking the condition, checking the quality, making sure it's a real card. Uh, that story resonates very, very heavily with me because I think when you talk about it, uh, in Houston, there's this female and what, and she's a very famous female in Houston. She goes around and she's on Craigslist and Facebook groups and her whole deal is, oh, I have this collection. I had to throw out my boyfriend but then when you check out her profile, she doesn't even have a boyfriend, right? Like her Facebook. So I know her, who her, she is. And she goes around saying to stores in Houston as well as to uh, Facebook groups and Craigslist especially. That's, that's how I found her. I found her on Craigslist. And I was like, okay, this is an interesting collection, but I think it's fake. And she's like, oh no, it's not fake. My, my ex-boyfriend, uh, my boyfriend collected these cards and they're definitely real. He spent like, thousands of dollars on them, but I just want a hundred dollars. So the cards are worth like $5,000 and she wants $100 for it. So if a boyfriend left the collection and the girlfriend's trying to sell the collection and the collection is worth $5,000 and the girlfriend's trying to sell it for $100, would not that boyfriend stop that from happening and just give her the $100 to get the collection back? Uh, but sometimes when, you are, when people are greedy, they don't see that the deal is too good to be true. Today, if you can post on Craigslist, you have the internet. If you have the internet, you can figure out what these cards are worth. Really that simple. Um, if you're going to list out the cards in Craigslist, then you could Google them. And the first thing that comes up on this little hand side is like how much you can buy them from Card Kingdom or whatever store is advertising at the time. My personal opinion about counterfeits are A, it's not going to stop. B, you have to be careful. but and I guess C, if a deal is too good to be true, it's too good. It's not real. It's not real. And you have to be careful about those. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.